it is, but it's still in the cloud. I'm guessing it's going to be a flatbed. Hey guys, welcome to Digging with Seven. This is a solo hunt that I do, and it's not one day, it's a, a culmination of three or four days. I get my new Equinox, and I do a little bit of hunting with it uh, in this video, and with my AT Pro, and also with my uh, uh, GPX. So, a little bit of everything. Hope you enjoy it. I don't know what it is, but it's still in the cloud. I'm guessing it's going to be a flat button. And I'd be right. That's what it is. Mm. It's a flat button. Man, it's corroded. Still more in here, though. This button was laying right there. Just right on top of the ground. I don't know if the cows kicked it up or what. It's a little cuff button with the uh, shank broke off. <laughs> That's pretty cool right there. Couple of good finds out of that hole right there. I've got a uh, cuff button here with a shank broke off. And then I've got, you can't hardly see it right there, I don't think. A little piece of china with the uh, blue on it. You always find those around these old house sets. I'll take both of those. Not too many buttons with shanks, but that one's got one. It's not standing up, been over a little bit. But it's a nice button. It's fairly deep, too. Probably about six inches, I guess. Sweet. I find a brass ring at every one of these colonial sets. But if this is a ring that is worn on the finger, it's the smallest one I've ever seen. Thinnest. But I kind of believe that's what it is. Could be part of a three-piece button, but it's got some decoration around the outside of it and smooth on the inside. I kind of about halfway believe it that, that is a ring. I'll take it either way. I'm still around this tree, but I'm going a different direction, and I could I can hear this one I'm trying to pop in there a little bit, about I don't know four inches down probably six these signals don't sound good at all you really got to hunt for them i've had uh, maybe two or three that sounded real good but the rest of them just been real choppy a lot of iron in them and you'll get a squeak in there every now and then that's what this one did little cuff flat button here's a good find right here it is a uh, round ball That's bigger than a 36. That may be a 44. Still got a little bit of the sprue on it there. Find these around these old colonial house sites. Well, this is my first find with the uh, Equinox Maiden Voyage. I've got a uh, little silver plated buckle. Sweet little find right there. Sounded good all the way around. It's about probably six inches deep. Now your guess is as good as mine on this right here. It's got numbers running up the sides of it. It's enclosed on the top. And I can't make out any other markings, but it goes like 65, 75, 95, uh, 50, 70, 90. That is some kind of gauge. I'll have to do some research on that and see what that is. Well, I thought this brass item was some kind of gauge, and it is. It is part of a Schrader tire pressure gauge, manufactured by the A. Schrader and Son Incorporated of Brooklyn, New York. Patents on this tire gauge were received in 1909, 1916, 1922, 
and 1923. Schrader is well known for many inventions related to the tire industry in America. August Schrader immigrated from Hanover, Germany to New York in 1843. Within a few years, he started a small company making brass fittings for the rubber industry, which had started only a few years before. In 1890, pneumatic tires were in use on the bicycle racing circuit, and the Goodyear Brothers tire manufacturer asked Schrader to design a better air valve than the one they were using. Schrader and his son George applied for a patent on their design in 1893. It became known as the Schrader valve, also known as the American valve. Every car today uses a Schrader valve to keep the air in the tire. And I bet you didn't know that in 1845, Schrader began supplying fittings and valves for the rubber products made by the Goodyear brothers, which included the very first air pillows and life preservers. Back out with the Knox, the uh, second day, it's a pretty deep hole right there. I've got a real nice suspender clip here. I don't think I would have heard that with the AT Pro. It's in there with a lot of iron, but it picked it out good. That rang up about 11, 10, 11, somewhere around in there. Back out with the Knox, and that's a fairly deep hole right there. Probably seven, eight inches. This is a piece of leather. It's got one, two, three rivets in it. I had no idea what that was when I first pulled it out of the ground. Probably off of a piece of horse tack of some kind. Well, all the fields are grown up, so we're having to get into the woods. I'm on a Civil War camp here. And I've got a little uh, 31 caliber buck ball right there. Always like finding those. Take anything we can get right now. Summer's hard on us down here in Kentucky and Tennessee. You see that right there? That's poke salad. <laughs> Big old tree here. And I've got a uh, very deep hole there. I don't know, it's probably nine inches. Here's what I came for. I'm in the 44 woods. I've got another Coke 44. Just keeps giving. I got another one. I don't know, that hole was probably about six inches. Here's been chewed on a little bit. Varmints do that. They think they've got a, a nut. Another Coke 44 from the American Civil War. Got my little 10 by 5 tool on. This was a screamer right here. Henry Casey. Don't find too many of those on this part of the camp. It's generally on a uh, like a picket post part or outline part of the camp on the other side of the lake. I think that's the first one of these on this part. I'm hunting a spot that I have hunted with my CTX before, I think one time. Our Civil War camp is back in that direction right there. And it's probably been two or three years since I hunted this. Like I say, I hunted it with CTX, but I brought the GPX over. And on this hill right here, uh, previously, I think I might have found a couple of bullets. I don't know. But I came back in with the uh, GPX today and uh, hunted for about an hour and had a decent hunt. Uh, I didn't film anything at the hole, but uh, I did find three thirty-six round balls. Looks like all of those have been fired. Uh, found five Henry casings and a couple of iron buckles. So all in all, it was a pretty good hunt.
Hey guys, thanks for watching today. And remember, Tennessee Jeff and I have a podcast every Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern. It's called Relics Radio. It's on Spreaker.com. We always have a good guest. We always have a good time. So I'll see you on Relics Radio Thursday and YouTube on Tuesday.